Hi, and welcome to Sparkle Tart. Hi everyone. Today's video in the kissing class is kind of a crossover. So it's using the February topic of stenciling and masks, but it's also using the March topic of recycling. So I hope you enjoy my video and check out this awesome art journal page made with recycled packaging materials. Today I'd like to share a really cool idea with you and it's recycling product packaging. Now this is also my first clip as a design team member for Lulu Art. So you'll be seeing some great stuff from me for the next 12 months and this is what we're creating today. So I had to use the black creative journal from Dilutions. I got this just after Christmas and not only does it have a beautiful black cover, thank you Ranger, but gorgeous matte black pages. So this is going to be something I'm challenging myself to use this year. Now when I got this journal, I loved the paper, but I also adored the packaging. When I took it off, it had all of these amazing colors and patterns, and I was having a little bit of trouble because I didn't want to throw it away. So I decided to use it in my very first page in this black journal, and I figured I would share it with you all because I can't be the only person out there that thinks some of the product packaging on our art materials is simply gorgeous. The first step is to cut or punch your pieces of packaging into useful and interesting shapes. So if you've got some nice larger pieces, you can use these as background panels. Anything smaller, you can cut with a punch or even tear if you can. And then glue this using matte gel onto your journal page. Make sure it's matte so it doesn't leave any shiny spots. Now while you're gluing your packaging materials onto your journal page, also add a layer of the matte gel medium on top of the packaging. Now a lot of packaging has sort of a protective coating and while it's great as keeping the packaging uh, looking gorgeous, it's not so great to work on as an art journal. So just add a layer of the matte gel over the top of the whole thing. Now just for consistency, so I'm working on the same kind of surface across the whole page, I'm going to add a layer of the matte gel all over the black background paper as well. Now this just means that I won't have two types of surfaces that I'm working on, so all my products will react the same way. Now the next step is going to be breaking up the background I've glued down using some black gesso. Now you can use golden, you can use uh, Dina Wakely, dilutions, anything you like, as long as it's matte and black, the two key factors. Now the stencil image on the background here looks like it was done with the letter jumble from Dilutions. Now, I don't have that one but I have the number jumble. So this will allow me to add um, a similar pattern without being exactly the same to so make it look more like a journal page layer. So I am just going to add some yummy black gesso here. Now when I'm using this for stenciling I like to apply it to the lid and then make sure that I've got my brush painty but not drippy. Now the key here is going to be adding it so that it breaks up the layers. Now to do that you need to add it over the background and the coloured paper. Now when you're adding the paint don't forget these edges as well because otherwise it's going to look too perfect and a little bit strange. So just you don't have to do the whole thing just make it scruffy. Now you can immediately see the difference between that super clean version and this slightly scruffier one. Without doing anything particularly exciting, this now looks like it's part of the background and it's beginning to come together as a page and have its sort of own personality rather than look like packaging. Now as you're taking a look at it, sit back a bit if there are any areas that look a little bit too clean, a little bit too pristine, go in there with that grubby paintbrush and scruff it up. And just keep playing until either you're happy with it or all of the paint has been used up on your brush. Now it's time to personalize your page a little bit more using some light molding paste and some stencils to add some texture. We'll also add color to this later. 
Now you can mix and match your stencils. I often have several different types of circle stencil on the one page, which is what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start with the large circle from the mini life masks from the crafters workshop. This is a beautiful large stencil and it gives you lots and lots of things, lots of ways that you can use this later on and add color to it. So I like this one a lot. Now I go by the rule of three. You can't just have one thing on a page. It just looks lonely. When you have two, it sort of looks a little bit too matchy matchy. So three or an odd number is kind of nice. It makes your eye move around the page. But on a page like this, where would you put the third large circle? Well, it doesn't actually have to be a whole thing. You can have part of it and it still makes your eye move. So that's what I'm doing now. Now it's time to spice it up with a little variety. So I'm using the dilution stencil to add some various medium size and small circles to my design. Now you'll notice I'm not adding this in a block. I'm actually adding it in sort of a wavy pattern to give my page a little bit of shape and form. Now, if you're not fond of a particular piece, the really great thing is you can just kind of scrape it off. Now, you can use fingers. You can be a little fancier than that if you like. I often just use my fingers. Now, don't waste this. I'm going to add this as little bits of texture to help disguise some of those edges. Now you can keep messing with that molding paste until it's dry. It gives you lots of opportunity to change things, play with things, do things a little differently. Now you can kind of see I'm working on a pattern. It flows towards the middle and up and over the side. So the page has a bit of a flow. If I didn't have this little connecting line here, the page would look a little bit separate which isn't a bad thing, it's just not the look I was after. I'm just going in and scruffing this up a little. For some reason if it looks too perfect it bothers me. <laughs> I don't know why. Alright, now I'm going to go and clean off my stencil. I have some Art Alchemy acrylic paints from Finnebar in rose gold and light patina. And I've also got a Gansai Tambi Starry Colors watercolor set. To start with, I'm going to add a few drops of water to the Gansai Tambi set, and I'm going to use the blue gold. And this is just to activate the watercolor, and it can sit there while I start the first layer of color on the background. So while that's sitting, I'm going to add a little bit of the Opal Magic. Now this color is beautiful and soft on white, but man, does it really shine on black. So this particular Art Alchemy paint has a fabulous duo tone. You get that lovely soft rosy tone on white and a beautiful strong metallic gold on darker colours. Next I'm going to take some of the blue gold, which is now lovely and syrupy. You can see that. I'm going to do a little bit of flicking here. I just need to add a few elements of the unexpected into the design because the original collage papers that I used were quite square. Now by allowing the water to sit in that watercolour pan, especially on metallic colours, it gives me two options. I can use it as that thick syrupy consistency for beautiful almost solid metallic colours or I can dip the brush in some water and spread that colour out for a thin veil of shimmer. It's gorgeous. Now I'm actually layering my golds here. So I'm layering this blue gold over the rose gold. It's looking pretty nice. Now to kick off the color, I'm going to start with the Art Alchemy Light Patina. This will be my pastel base coat, but it's also a kind of a turquoisey looking color, which will match what I put on there afterwards. So this gives a really nice light coat of color and I'm also using it to enhance some of the background areas. The next step is to add some intense color using acrylics and fluid acrylics. I'm going to start with Dina Wakeley's Heavy Body Turquoise. Now the easiest way to apply this is to just add a little dollop onto one of those little circles of texture paste and use a brush to spread this around. 
Now make sure you add a little bit on each side and on all of the larger elements just so that that color really pops. Once you've got a great base of that beautiful turquoise, add a little green gold fluid acrylic from Golden. Now if you add this while the turquoise is still wet, you can make some beautiful blends of those acrylic colors. Also use these on some of the smaller areas of texture paste. Then add a little bit more turquoise just to finish it off and make sure your blend is beautiful. Bring some of that magenta color from the original packaging into the top layer of your design. Now I'm doing this by adding a little bit of the quinacridone magenta from Golden onto some of the circles, onto the background, and also picking out some of those original background elements that were on the packaging by going over some of the lettering. Now I'm just using a dry brush technique here to work that magenta in without it being too strong. And I think the results look fantastic. Now as a final step, I'm just going to add a little bit of Inca Gold, just with my finger, just to help pick out the texture. Now I love applying the final layer of gold wax paste with my fingers because you can apply it exactly where you want it. You can feel the texture and apply different pressures so you can get a little tiny smear over the top or big bold areas of the metallic wax. And I think that this just finishes it off and ties all of the separate colors and elements together. Now with all of those different elements working together, I hope you'll agree that it's gone from pretty packaging to a pretty awesome journal page. The layers of metallics, the varying colors of metallics, the gorgeous acrylic paints in both pastels and brights, contrasting with that black background and really enhancing the colors in that original packaging. Yum. I hope I'm not the only one who thinks this is just gorgeous. Now I'm going to add a few bits of white paint pen to this, there may be a word or two here or there just to finish it off, but um, the colour is pretty much done for me. I'm loving the way that I started with the packaging, but by overlaying the stenciling and bringing those colours out, you would never know it's a couple of strips of um, journal packaging on this final page. Now that I'm finished, I can show you that gorgeous texture up close. The white really enhances the colors and the black makes them pop. I wish I could show you this in person because the metallics just make my sparkly heart flutter. The combination of the metallic paints against the matte acrylics makes both of those things look so much more than they do just by themselves. So I hope you've had a little bit of fun watching my journal page come together using recycled packaging and stenciling. So I hope you've enjoyed the first month of the kissing class and I'll be back with more next week. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love you to give me a like and if you'd like to see more from Sparkle Tart, subscribe to my YouTube channel. There's a product list below the video in the description and you can connect with me via YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter or Google+. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.